Hello, I'm Kyle DuPont and welcome to this week's edition of Community College News. News for all six MBCC campuses. Today we look at a few stories involving the trades programs and how to protect yourself against internet scams. But first, students are concerned that a lockout by the Acadian bus lines may disrupt their travel plans home for the holidays. A lockout was expected to begin Friday morning. The holiday season is a time for giving, but as Michael McDonald reports, even in tough economic times, people are willing to chip in to help others. Charities always depend on community support during the holiday season, but it's not always easy to contribute to a good cause. I mean, we do realize that during difficult economic times, donations are are difficult for some people to make. The Red Cross depends on holiday giving to support programs. I wouldn't say that they're down, but they're not way up either. <laughs> Gregory Underhill is a member of the Florenceville Kins Club. Pledges for the annual Christmas telethon are lower than last year. I presume people are just hanging on to the money because they're not sure what's going to happen next month or the month after. The Woodstock Food Bank's busiest time is the Christmas season. We haven't seen a decline in donations, but we have seen an increase in numbers served. Olmsted said the food bank is serving 16 new families a month. Some families only use the food bank during the holidays. Uh, you know, Christmas is a very stressful time. It's a very stressful time for everybody, whether you have financial problems or not. Food banks like this one in Woodstock are available to help those in need all year round, but they do require support this time of year more than any other. In Woodstock, Michael McDonald, Community College News. You may have noticed on the MBCC Facebook page a successful fundraiser by the Fredericton campus. They collected 172 boxes filled with school supplies, hygiene products, and toys for children. They will be sent to needy places in the world as part of Operation Christmas Child. Here's an unconventional approach to fundraising. A drag show was held to raise money for Dun Roman, a volunteer animal stray and rescue service. Eleven contestants participated in the event. They competed in a variety of events from best legs contest, a talent show, and evening wear. The money raised will support Dun Roman, which is run out of the Florenceville Veterinary Clinic. In 2007, only 3% of students who were enrolled in the trades at the college level in the province were women. Trades like carpentry and welding tend to employ more men. As Mike Chusiak reports, some women are trying to beat the odds. You may not notice at first glance, but women have been involved in trades for years. Melanie Wilson is one of them. Well, I decided to take it because it was just a different, uh, different path for me. I went the academic route. I went to university for four years doing sciences and decided to switch it up. Being the only girl in a class of guys, Wilson was understandably apprehensive about taking the course. First day, of course, I was nervous. I thought, gee, I'm the only girl. Um, but then, as soon as 15 minutes went by with the guys, you just end up like a big family. Troy Sarchfield is one of the welding instructors at the Woodstock campus. He has noticed more women taking an interest in the trades. From my time spent here in the building, I, uh, I see women in all the trades. The New Brunswick Advisory Council on the Status of Women reported that the number of women in trades has remained stagnant for over 20 years. As of 2007, only 64 of the registered 3,000 apprentices in the province were female. Ashley Bent is one of the few female carpenters studying for her apprenticeship and has been in the workforce for two years now. She says there are still biases towards female tradesmen. It's like an equal playing ground in school, and when you get out in the real world, it's not quite the same. Mm -hmm. They just seem to, more or less, you're a little weak compared to the boys, I guess. Bent admits there are still some preconceptions towards women in trades, but does not believe that taking carpentry was a mistake. In Woodstock, Mike Trusiak, Community College News. About one-third of the programs offered at MBCC are trades. From carpentry and electrical to plumbing, each one offers its own safety concerns. Jillian Trainer has more. Trades are among the more popular courses offered across all campuses. In each trade, they all provide extensive safety training. Electrical instructor Jody Greer says safety is a 45-hour course. 
We start out, we do uh, what's called safety orientation. So it teaches the students uh, their rights and regulations out on the job site. Uh, we teach them all about personal protective equipment. So hearing protection, eye protection, footwear. This is your load going out to your heater. That's what they call line and load. Last year in New Brunswick, there were about 1,300 accidents on the job involving workers aged 18 to 24. Greer says the instructors prepare their students for the real world. So we're finding that people are coming out uh, enjoying the workforce and not knowing uh, what's safe and what isn't safe, and that's a big part of what we do here. Andrew Peterson is a student in the electrical program. He knows the value in proper safety. Well, we're working a lot of, around a lot of power tools and high voltage, so well, it's important to know all that stuff so you don't get seriously injured. It is mandatory that the Occupational Health and Safety Act provided by the government is covered in the programs. Knowing these skills can potentially save your life. In Woodstock, Jillian Trainer, Community College News. The RCMP are already investigating their 23rd online scam in New Brunswick so far this year. Victims are losing thousands of dollars with each scam. Jocelyn Turner explores different ways to protect yourself online. Scams are all over the internet, waiting for an unsuspecting victim to fall into the trap. They can come in an email, take over your Facebook, and even trick your friends into sending money for fake causes. Okay, well, I was just like getting off work and my boyfriend asked me he's like who's Jamie Lee so I thought he meant like somebody that I went to school with so I said so I told him that and he's like no it's you Hicks says the fake profile even had pictures of her she couldn't even access the profile she had friends report the problem to Facebook she also wrote directly to Facebook about the fraud because they never like responded back to me but like a few weeks later like the profile was gone so Hicks never found out who created the fake profile. She says the experience was terrifying. I was scared to death. So I had no idea what was on it. Woodstock Police. Corporal Carter Stone says Hicks is not the only victim he has seen over the years. Over the past few months, Stone says the Woodstock Police have seen many different fraud-related cases. In one case, a number of computers were delivered to an apartment, but no order had been placed. We had a a uh, undercover, undercover op officer posed as a delivery driver, delivered around 40 laptop computers to this address, and as a result, we uh, obtained a search warrant and did a search of the residence and uh, recovered around $100,000 in computers which had been fraudulently obtained. Stone says the computer purchasing scam started online, tracing all the way back to Ghana, Africa. He says a few vulnerable people were conned into purchasing the computers but never received them. We were able to uh, find out this person involved had uh, actually had a program that made credit card numbers and expiry dates and it would go through tens of thousands of credit card numbers and pick out the valid ones. It was actually using those numbers to make purchases on, online with. Corporal Stone says situations of credit card fraud and identity theft are common online. He says people share too much personal information. Um, because once it goes on there and you press that button to enter it, it's out there for the world to see and it can be found. Stone says we should not open any unfamiliar emails. He says if you do not know the sender, delete it. Opening the message might give a hacker access to all your personal information. In Woodstock, Jocelyn Turner, Community College News. One major concern for schools is safety. Lockdown drills are an essential part of improving safety for staff and students. John Callan reports. These are the sights and sounds of a lockdown drill at NBCC Woodstock. Doors are locked, hallways empty. A lockdown is called if there's a potential threat to the staff and students. And the whole purpose of a lockdown is to uh, to reduce uh, the targets of availability. Safety of staff and students is a primary concern for Principal Tim Marshall. That is what it's all about. It's, uh, it's about getting ourselves ready and going through an exercise so that we, uh, I guess, do the necessary things to, to make sure that each and every person in the building is, is as safe as they can be. There are a few steps that must be followed to ensure your safety. Ensure doors are shut and locked. 
Blinds or curtains are closed. Lights are shut off. Lockdowns are an important drill, as important as a fire drill. By staying calm and taking proper action, could save your life. In Woodstock, John Callum, Community College News. Miramichi instructor Brian McGee will wrap up the Movember fundraiser for prostate cancer awareness during the December 2nd Friday noon hour. Student Thomas Collins will shave McGee's beard. Here are some events to look forward to. In Moncton, there will be a children's Christmas party happening next Wednesday the 7th from 5 to 7. There will also be a basketball tournament Saturday in the gym. The St. Andrews campus will have a ball hockey tournament running from December 5th to the 9th. There will also be a masquerade ball happening at the college on the 8th. In Woodstock, candiograms will be on sale from December 5th to the 6th. On Wednesday the 7th, there will be a cream pie candy hunt in the cafeteria at noon hour. The Christmas tree decorating contest, which begins on Monday, will wrap up on the 9th. All-terrain vehicles are popular in New Brunswick. However, some riders are worried the cost of this recreational activity may soon increase. Jill Constantine reports. ATVing is an activity that is enjoyed by more than 35,000 New Brunswickers. The cost associated with the sport could soon be changing. Registration fees are going up and trail passes may become mandatory to give more money back to the 57 ATV clubs in New Brunswick. Dave Buston is a member of the Sussex ATV Club who purchased a voluntary trail pass. They should be voluntary. Some people stay on their own lands from what I hear. And I have no problem because the clubs do a lot of work to keep the trails open and I have no problem throwing a little bit of money their way. So. But not everyone agrees with Buston. If trail passes become mandatory, more money will be given back to the clubs. They need the money to build new trails and perform necessary maintenance in order to keep the trails safe. So those people who travel the trails and don't buy trail passes don't contribute anything to the maintenance and we need that money. Danielle Boucher, president of the New Brunswick all Train Vehicle Federation, was one of the people who presented the changes to government. He says a mandatory trail pass is something they have been considering for a while. And basically uh, it's a way to manage the system better, to make sure that every user that uses the system contributes equally uh, to the trail. The Federation also proposed to government an increase to the registration fee. Currently, the cost of registration is $41. The Federation is looking to increase the fee by increments of $25 over four years, bringing it to $141. This increase would bring in an estimated $5 million. Uh, we got to understand that every clubs are requesting more trails every day. Uh, there's need for more trails, more access for uh, the user to go on, and uh, basically uh, we show the system uh, to them that would support uh, trail development in this province at a reasonable rate. But some riders are worried that in the long run they will no longer be able to afford to register their ATVs. I would think that if it goes to $150, then uh, our club will probably be obsolete. I think it's very unjust. We are already taxed to the limit. Boucher explained that Quebec has a well-established ATV tourism business, something he thinks that the New Brunswick ATV community can achieve as well. Currently, the Federation is working on creating a provincial trail system. Jill Constantine, Community College News. That's our show for today. To submit a story idea, email us at jschoolmbcc at gmail.com or to see more of our work visit jschoolmbcc.ca thanks for watching